Hi there! Welcome to our succulent beehive tutorial. You can see here we've got our lovely beehive which was handmade by my brother actually. And of course there's some moss on here but that's just some old stuff. Uh, we'll be adding some fresh stuff today. So you can see in your kit you will also have your sphagnum moss, some tacky glue, your big box of suckies, all different shapes and sizes and colours. And then of course we've also got our polymer clay for our cute little bumblebee, our super glue and our toothpick just for some little detailing. And of course we'll also need, um, you'll also need to grab yourself a wipe to clean your hands whilst you're working with the polymer clay because it does tend to get very dirty easily. Well, let's get started. So starting with our polymer clay, um, I go yellow, white and then black last. So you, the clay that we've given you allows you to make a few bumblebees if you like, but in this tutorial we're just going to make one. So grabbing your clay, rolling it up into a nice perfect ball, and then we're simply just going to flatten it out to sort of like a flat egg shape. And you don't want it to be too, th too fat or also too thin. With them all, well, you can, it can be either really, but you're just going to ensure that they're all evenly the same so it doesn't um, stir up the cooking process. Now we're going to do the wings. You can see it is rolling two little balls, and then I'm just squishing and pinching and then just smoothing it out to create a bit of a teardrop shape. And just sort of matching it up with the body to make sure that the ratio is nice. And then we're going to be grabbing our black last and just rolling it into a super thin little snake and remembering you want this to be really quite thin because when you push it onto your bumblebee they will get um, wider as you apply that pressure you'll see what happens here yep so as I'm applying that pressure they get a bit wider so you really want to ensure it's nice and thin to begin with and I'm also putting them on in that curved motion so it looks like it's nice and rounded. Now popping the wings on, you can see I've done one on the back, one on the front. And you also really want to apply a good amount of pressure and to get a nice flat bottom. That way it sticks to the beehive good. And you can see here I've added just a little, um, little stinger if that's what you want to do. That looks great. Now chucking it in the oven, we're only going to put it in for about four, three, four minutes at about 180. But um, every oven's different, just keep an eye on it. And when it's ready, it might start smoking a little bit. And it'll also be, of course, very hot to the touch. And when you press it with your fingernail, it shouldn't create any indentations. So moving along, we're going to be doing our sphagnum moss, which tends to get a bit messy. And starting off, we're just going to grab our tacky glue and pretty much just cover that roof completely. Well, not completely, completely, but a good amount. And then starting off, we're just going to do a nice thin layer of moss. You can see here, I've probably only put oh, a centimetre, if that, of moss on there. Sort of a centimetre's depth, sorry. You can still see a little bit of the glue underneath, but it's enough just so it's all sticking in place. If you add too much, it's obviously not going to um, make contact with that glue. So because of that, we're going to do this layer and then move on to a second layer. So we're getting close to finishing. We're just going to do the second layer on the other side. You can see it's getting nice and thick. And you really want to ensure that there's a good amount of um, moss, especially on that top bridge section, because that's probably, well, that's where I like to put my bigger succulents. So um, having a lot of moss there just ensure that it holds it in place. And of course, there's enough moss for the roots to go into. So 
but I'm really squishing it down and I'm also just having a play with my fingers to check the depth and I'm just going to go through and add an extra little layer on that bridge section. You can see how I'm definitely only working in thin layers. I make sure there's a good amount of glue throughout, but it's not absolutely saturated at the same time. Applying heaps of pressure and squishing it all, and then give it a good shake test to make sure it's all intact. And then checking the depth once more to make sure it's good to go. Sweet. Now we're moving on to my favorite part, the sucky. So you can see here I've got all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Um, it's ranging from large to medium to small. Um, and then we've got lots of different fillers. So popping them all out, I like to have a good suss of what's available before I start. And you can see I'm going to start off with my tall succulents first. I like to put those sort of slightly taller ones in the back so that when they um, start growing, you'll get this really cool, nice tall effect at the back. But of course, it's all about personal preference if you guys want to change it. You can see that I've just used my plant stick to create a nice deep hole all the way down to the wood. And then I'm filling it up with glue. You do need a bit more for your bigger and taller succulents, but as you move through to your babies, you'll need less and less. And if you do go um, <laughs> go crazy with your glue, it can affect the way that the succulent sticks. So if you put too much, your succulent will get a bit, like obviously it's a bit soggy in the moss and your succulent's likely to fall out easily until it dries. So having the dry moss and also the little bit of tacky glue really helps ensure that it holds in place nicely while it dries. You can see I moved on to the bigger succulents and I'm putting those at the top section. I find that putting them up there, they have, um, they're obviously nice and vertical and they're sitting well in that deep moss, whereas along the sides, it tends to get a bit tricky to stick them. They um, wobble around a bit. <laughs> so I'm sort of going with a bit of a V formation. I start with all my big ones and disperse them nice and evenly. Oh, one fell out. <laughs> You'll see that sometimes you might have to just sort of just sit there and hold it in place, do a little bit of wiggling. I've even had to prop something up against it before just to hold a succulent in place, but I assure you it will stick. <laughs> it just takes a bit of patience sometimes. <laughs> oh, and you can see here, this one doesn't have too much of a stem, but you know, that's sort of pushing the limits. Um, obviously I don't want to take too many leaves away from that one because it'll affect its size. But generally, oh, there it goes again. Generally, um, yeah, you should sort of remove a couple of your leaves to create a bit of stem space, and that way it'll hold in place a bit better. So you can see that one there has been a temperamental little bugger. <laughs> it'll stick eventually. Alright, so now we're moving slightly down in size. This one's obviously still a bit big, but a bit smaller. Sweet. And even as I sort of tilt it to the side, they're not falling off, which is amazing. Some will, of course, but <laughs> just goes to show though. So now I think I'm going to put in a filler succulent. I'm making up my mind. Yes? No? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're putting in one of our little filler succulents and those ones are a ground cover. So obviously they'll grow not too large whilst they're in your beehive, but if you plant them in the garden, they'll go crazy and they get these beautiful little pink flowers, which you'll see um, the one sitting on the table. The bees love them. So now moving down to sort of my medium to small range. And when I place my succulents, I definitely work on giving emphasis to the front of my, um, my beehive. So that way it looks, it sort of gives you the illusion that it's really nice and full from the front. Um, and it's a good way to sort of disperse your succulents because obviously 
it probably won't have enough to completely fill it. That would take a, a lot of succulents, probably 40, 50, maybe even 60. <laughs> um, and also that allows a bit more space for your succulents to grow out and grow into your beehive. So now I'm just going through and filling it up. But that's probably all I need to uh, gab on about for now. So <laughs> um, we'll just let you guys have a little watch and good luck with your creating. Come back soon. Alright, onto the final touches now. This is where we put our, I think there's one more little yellow sucky to put in, yep. And then we move on to all of our little fillery ones to pop in around the gaps in the end. And here we go. Oh, and putting the lovely pink one right on top. Of course, the flower will die off, but your other ones will soon produce new flowers. And the final touch. Beautiful. Now, it does help to get a little bit of pressure on there, but everything seems to be sticking nicely. Awesome. Now it's time to attach our little bumblebee. So it's nice and cooled off and obviously made sure none of the parts are falling off. Opening up that super glue. And then we're just gonna put a couple of little blobs on there. Don't wanna go too big because it will take a long time to dry otherwise. You can see here I'm only going really small, popping a bit on the wing and the body. And then just popping it on the side of the beehive. Of course, you guys can pop your little bumblebee or bumblebees wherever you'd like. Some people put them on the front of their beehive, on the little bamboo part. Um, yeah, go crazy. And of course, you can see here that it's not quite sticking properly, so I've just chucked a little bit more super glue. That's why it's really important to make sure it's nice and flat so it sticks easy. Oh, look at it. Sweet. And we are done. I hope you guys loved this tutorial and it was easy to follow and you made lovely little beehives. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with your creating again. <laughs>